everybody and welcome to this well I'd like to say short video but you know me by now it's probably not going to be that short and there's quite a lot of things that we're doing we're going to make a mixed media background with a floral uh, foc focal point and uh, I'm going to use watercolour paper and mine is Sea uh, White of Brighton but any watercolour paper will probably do you this is quite thick it's 350 GSM or 150 pounds um, and it's A4 in size which is perfect for the place that I want to put it those of you that have watched me for a little while will know I have a giant green book uh, with black sheets in and that's where this finished piece is destined for so I've just taken out one sheet of this and I'm gonna first thing I'm gonna do is spray the background and for that I've got distress stains I've got mustard seed which is a nice yellow I've got rusty hinge which is probably my favorite of all it's an orangey rusty color vintage photo which we're all familiar with nice brown mid brown color and this one, which isn't a distress spray, it's a dilution spray uh, and it's called Ground Coffee and it's quite dark. So I've got my dark brown, my mid brown, my rusty colour and my yellow. So that's my palette. So let's get spraying. Now, Mr F has kindly made me a splat box. It's not like Tim's. Well, it's a bit like Tim's, isn't it? I mean, look at it. It's going to stop the splatter going all over my desk. And at the bottom, I've just got a well-used um, piece of kitchen pad, kitchen paper, just to catch the worst of it. So that just fits into there. Let's get rid of all the crummy bits. And we're just literally going to spray it. Um, I'm going to start off. It doesn't matter which how you started off really but before I do any of that I'm just going to give it a quick spray with some water catkin hair there which I could live without um, and a, a little bit on the back just to stop it curling quite so much so there we have it right let's start with the uh, let's start with the mustard seed no let's start the other way around let's start with the darkest colour so this is the uh, ground coffee and it does have a slightly green undertone to it actually but I don't I, I don't dislike that so that's we'll leave that there for the moment we can always come back and put more on then the vintage photo and you're just aiming really to fill the page up probably will need more of that then my gorgeous rusty hinge don't go overboard with it it's quite a strong color that likes to take over if you let it might want to come back into some of these gaps with a darker color but that's probably more than sufficient on the rusty hinge uh, these aren't oxide sprays they're just spray stains so um, it, we're not going to get that oxidization that you get with the oxides so just a little bit of the mustard seed um, try that right so I've still got some gaps so you know what do I want and where and I think it's the vintage photo that I want actually so I'm just we are going to add some water to this so it will move and I think that's probably sufficient so get your sprayer out your water sprayer and give it a good because you want these all to melt together give you a nice interesting background okay so there we are now you can move it at this stage physically move it and that's often a good thing to do just to get those colors blended if you don't like loads of ink on your fingers use 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 blood i nearly said i don't know where that came from use gloves um i'm not a great lover of getting ink on my fingers to be honest um 
I mean, we're getting some lovely, lovely, lovely lines here. And just keep turning it till you get what you want. You can always add more water to make things move a bit more. I think that looks quite nice. Just pop it back down there. Just a little bit more water there and there. And I'm just going to move it around. Get some nice movement going. I've got a little bit of a gap there, which is obviously dry. So I'm just going to... Yeah, there we are. I think that's a really nice background. As you can see, it wants to buckle. It's quite tight, this splat box, which doesn't make life any easier. Right, I think that's... I think that's about it. I'm quite happy with that. I've still got areas of defined colours. Let me just wipe my hands because I can't bear it any longer. And then we'll give it a quick dry. Oh, look at my hands. They're disgusting. Yeah, gloves. That's the thing. Get some gloves on. <laughs> it's just horrible. Yeah. Okay. Right, so I'm going to give that a quick dry. I'll pause you while I dry it because um, there's no point you watching me. <laughs> no point you watching drying paint, is there? So I'll just pause you there for a minute. Right, I've dried that off and it looks like it needs just a little bit of light. Now, with Distress Inks, you can't, I can't really lighten it by spraying anymore because they're translucent. But I am, however, despite the fact I know I can't, <laughs> I am going to try and uh, spray a little bit more mustard seed in places. I'll just give that a quick dry. It's just to add a little bit of interest to the background. We are going to be adding loads more to the background, so you know it's uh it, it's good i like it it's it's got lots of nice different shaded areas which is what we're after it doesn't take long to dry this with the with the timmy heat tool oh my goodness today today is the 5th of march 2022 i don't know when you'll be watching this but that's the actual date um and it's the the day for the new ideology 2022 release and i can't wait it's on at five o'clock in the afternoon uk time and it's now one o'clock <laughs> i got four hours to wait oh my goodness <laughs> i'm so excited to see what gorgeous little things he comes up with that i can include in my journals my all my journals but my fabric journals particularly i don't know what i I just love the little things, the little, oh, I don't know. We'll have to wait and see what he comes up with. That's all I can say. No point trying to second guess Timmy. Right, so it's this little bit here. It won't take long. So I am making you watch paint dry. Sorry, guys. <laughs> right there we are i think that's dry so i'll just pause you there while i put this black box away and what have you and i'll see you in a sec right so that's all nice and dry it's not lying very flat but flat enough it'll it'll get flat and the next process is to use a stencil. Now you can use any stencil that you've got. I'm very partial to using these numbers, but for this one, I'm not going to, because I think they might take over a bit. So I'm going to use the dots and I'm not going to put a color through them more. I'm going to try and take a color off them. Um, so I'm going to use a baby wipe. and just rub that through the stencil. Now I don't want a square shape or anything like that. I just want a sort of irregular, irregular shape. <laughs> so I'm just gonna rub through 
and hopefully this will lighten in part. Some colours are more resistant than others, but we'll see. So there we are, and it just lifts off that colour. It's, it gives a nice effect, I think. So I'm just going to go down this, this side a little bit. You've got to use clean baby wipe. If, you, if you're if you always using the same baby wipe, you'll be putting the colour back on because it'll be on your wipe. So you have to kind of keep swapping out your baby wipes. But that's a nice effect. I like that. Uh, let's find a clean bit on this one. There we go. Um... These are bigger, bigger size ones, so I'll use that. That's fine. Sufficient. And then just a little bit down here. My baby wipe now really is dirty. And probably fairly ineffective, I would have thought. Right, there we are. So we've got those taken out and actually, I mean, they really look nice. I, I like I like that effect. If you didn't like that effect, use your stencil and put so, put a different colour on. Um, <laughs> look at my hands again, they're disgusting. Right, so where's my Timmy towel? Let's give my hands a good wipe. So the next thing that we want to do is we want to put some stamps on it. We want to stamp onto it. Oh, piece of metallic thread wants to join the party. And I'm going to use the clock wand, the round clock wand. You don't have to. You can use any stamp you like. But we are going to be stamping. I'm going to use, uh, I'm using acrylic paint. You could use a metallic one, which would look really, really nice. Uh, I'm just using, it's called Titanium Buff, and it's uh, just off-white colour, really. Um, am I, or am I going to use white? Uh, no, I'll use this. It's not quite so harsh as white. I think I showed you this technique before, but in case I didn't, um, just put some white acrylic paint. And acrylic will sit on top of all of this. So... Um, I don't want a block to mount this on. I'm just going to do it by hand. So there's my acrylic paint. Here's my brayer. And I'm just going to uh, brayer that out into a little place where I can pick up the paint from. Like that. And just, where's the 12? There's the 12, okay. So I'm just going to drop that into it, pick up some paint, and I'm going to go around the edge. And I can go over the stencil marks that we made. Can overlap these if you want to. You can put a whole one on if you want to. And you see they're quite they're quite bright compared to that um, background, and it's difficult getting anything apart from acrylic paint to show on the background. So it's quite, it's just a random, it's a random thing. Do it where you fancy, where you think it would look nice. Not, not too many, but not too few. <laughs> I think that's about right, actually. I quite like that. There's enough on there. Right, so... Please take care of your stamps. If you leave that acrylic paint on there, you'll have ruined them. So I'm just going to drop mine into a bowl of water and um, the brayer can get cleaned off at some stage. I'm just going to pick this, 
paint up. Oh, here comes Mr. Rev. He's so good. Thank you, my dear. Um, let's get some more kitchen towel. And if you pick the paint up straight away, spritz it with water, it'll come up. There we go. Just like it never happened. Lovely. That's the joy of these messy mats. Right, so the next thing I'm going to do is stamp in black. But I'm going to stamp some sort of text type thing. Um, I'm, going to, I'm going to use this one. It's just a random sort of alphabet type thing. And I'm going to use stays on for this. Um, I can't remember which way is up. It doesn't really matter. I think I will actually mount this. I think it would be easier because it's a bit floppy. And you want to come in varied sort of distances, really. Just a bit of interest. You can go over the clock faces if you want to or whatever it was that you you used. And I'm kind of filling the gaps in, really, where there's no clock faces. Hopefully we'll end up with an, a nice border. It's a, it's just simple. This it's not involving any collage underneath it or anything like that. We'll come on to those. We'll do that as we uh, gain confidence in mixed media. So there we are. There's our background. We've stenciled it. We've stamped it with acrylic paint. We've stamped it with uh, black ink. And I'm just going to put that to the side. Let me just stamp this off. Put that to one side. Clean my desk up. Because stays on, stays on. It's as good as its name. There we go. Right. So time to move on to the next part. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put white splatters on it. Uh, and for that, I'm using an acrylic paint pen. This is a company called Posca. Other people now do make acrylic pens, but Posca were the original and I have quite a few of them. So that's what I'm going to use. Um, they do have a ball inside, so you have to shake it until the ball is shaking freely. And this really is not, not what they're intended for, not doing splats, but they do do it rather well. So keep turning your paper, you'll end up with them all going the same direction. You've got to be quite forceful with it. And it is acrylic so it will take on some of the color that's underneath it but basically it'll stay still quite white which is uh, what we're hoping for if you haven't got a posca don't worry just use a little bit of white acrylic um, make a puddle with some water and uh, use that to splat with that'll be fine so the other thing that i have is a little stamp that is, it's just little dots, tiny little dots. Um, and it looks like it, you know, wouldn't be much good for anything, but it, it really is, I really like it. 
So I'm going to stick that onto my stamp block and I'm going to use uh, this, which is an oxide, so I know it's going to sit on top of everything. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, frog in my throat. So it's just this little... I'll put it there and you can... I'll put it there and you'll be able to see it. It's just a little... It's just little dots. But I like them, and I like them all over the place. You can't even really see them, but there they are. You could do that, you know, you could equally do this in white or anything. It's just to build up the texture in the background. Because that's what it, that's kind of what mixed media is all about, really building up textures. Right, so I'm not sure if you can see. Yeah, you can definitely see up here where I've put them. And it just adds another texture to our page, which is looking pretty good. Right, so the next thing to do, I think, is actually deal with the focal point. Now, let me just put these away because if you don't, then they never get put away. And then particularly this little one, I'll never find again in a month of Sundays. Let's go that way, I think. Right, let's pop those away in the bag. Okay, so we've finished with all that. Now the focal um, point for this um, mixed media piece, I have used the Sizzix Colorize uh, die cuts. And this one here is 664359. And you get two flowers, you get two different sorts of leaves. And it's a, it's a lovely, it's by Sophie, guitar is her name, Guilar, Guilar, Sophie Guilar. Uh, and it's really, really nice. I like it a lot. But I decided I wanted more greenery. <laughs> so I also bought this one, which is a Tim Holtz one. Uh, and it is number 665210. And with this, you see, you get more greenery, you get these little twiggy bits, more leaves, etc. So I have sort of amalgamated them for this uh, project that I'm doing here. But you don't need to. One is sufficient for sure. And I have painted mine. Oh, I'll show you how I have painted mine. I've painted mine in blue. And I've used flowers from both sets. And I used my Zig watercolour pens. You could equally use um, watercolour, depending what paper you're using. You could use your alcohol markers. If you really want to use your alcohol markers to colour, and um, obviously they won't colour on watercolour paper, but you could use um, matte medium over them, and then you'd be able to use your watercolour, your alcohol markers. So let's just put those there for the time being and see. I did have them sort of laid out how I wanted them, but, you know, things get lost in translation. <laughs> I do like those little sticky bits. Uh, and I like that little flower as well. So I've, I've sort of picked the best, the, the best of both of them, really, I think. Pop that there. Um, yeah, so there's, I mean, there's quite a bit of, of painting to do. If you don't like fiddling and faffing, then I'd suggest this is probably not, you know, the colorized eyes are not for you. Uh, I like sitting and, you know, just flapping around, <gasps> faddling around, painting and stuff. 
uh, it pleases me. I'll pop that little leaf coming out of there. Um, then I've got this one. I don't know where that went. This one. And very often when you get them, well, I would say every time, when you get them where you want them, take a photograph on your phone. Because as soon as you start to move one, they'll all move and you will never get it back to that place that you thought was perfect. I'm telling you, that is the truth. So I'm going to put one of those there and one down here. Like that, move that over a little bit. And I've still got this bit. Hmm, interesting. Right. Well, that wasn't exactly how I had it before, but I think that looks quite pleasing. So the next thing to do is stick them down. And I am not going to make you watch me stick these down. This is our focal point. I've shown you how to get your paper, your backing paper to this point. So I'm just going to pause you there, stick all these down and you can come back to me when when they're all stuck down because it'll be a little while. So see you soon. So there we have it. It's all stuck down. <laughs> um, it is a bit of a pain sticking everything down, but you don't have to use this. You know, you don't have to use these dies at all. I I I like them, and I think that they're worth the uh, the effort involved. I do like the fact that I've got both dies there is another one as well that i've got my eye on but no you know must common sense must prevail but you know i've got three feature flowers if you like two smaller flowers and then all these leaves and i particularly like the twiggy bit um and having both of them means that i can mix and match if you like so all this needs now is a title and i've chosen this one from uh the chipboard quotes uh, collect beautiful moments because I quite like that and I think that can go there but I do want to colour it because it's just not in keeping so what I'm going to do is use my distress crayon in rusty hinge and I'm just going to go over it like that and spread that out The distress crowns are translucent, so you're never going to cover the, um, the the lettering up. You always see it through there. I think that's fine. I like it. It's in keeping. So what does that look like now? Yeah, that looks much better. Much better. So let's just stick that down. I'm going to use collage medium for that because uh, it sticks awkward things. Oh, actually, no, let me, I've got a new glue, a new one. Um, and it's pin flare and it's all stick, all purpose craft glue. Now, th this is kind of designed for those awkward things that you're trying to stick, like <laughs> flat back pearls, for example. Um, but this is another thick thing that can be a bit awkward to get to stay down. I don't think it's your everyday art glitter glue. It is an acetone based glue, same as Fabri-Tac. Collal, three in one, whatever, um, and it's got a screw top. So let's just unscrew it a little bit and see what happens. Oh yeah, oh yeah, quite a lot of glue comes out. So I'll just spread that out with my finger, which is another one of my not most favorite jobs. And there we go, and it says just to leave it a couple of seconds while it tucks up, which is the same with all of those acetone based um, glues. Whoops, that's upside down, that'll never do. So let's just pop that there. Let's just check that that's straight, because you know, I can never tell just by looking. So that's an inch along there. So let's just push that down to there and then it will be straight. Marvellous. There we have it. There is my 
mixed media page. I'm just going to put a drop shadow underneath there. <laughs> In fact, that's it, but I'm just going to carry on. Um, and I've got one of these, uh, what are they called? Stabilo, and they're called all, A-double-L, um, because they go on all surfaces. So I'm just going to put a little bit, well, quite a big bit, actually, under there. A little bit down the side there. And I'm just going to create for myself a little bit of a dropped shadow just to make it look. So you put your crayon on and then you add water and it goes like the blackest ink. It's gorgeous. And that's just going to give me a dropped shadow there and up that side. And then if you clean your brush out so it's clean again and just pull that down, fade it away like that. So we've got that drop shadow. So it makes that look now like it's popping. Uh, shall I do something around the edge? I think so. I do like things around the edge. And I think what I'm going to do is use a dark brown. I don't know if gathered twigs will be dark enough. We can try it, seeing as it's sat here on my desk. Let's get a brush out. I don't know what my phone's doing there. <laughs> Just have to clear enough space for an ink pad, it's ridiculous. And let's go and see if that's dark enough. No, it's not. It's just not. Um, let's see if we've got a darker one. Brushed corduroy, no. Um, do with a black suit, really, if I had one. I've definitely got a black suit ink, so let's use that. Oh, Grand Espresso. Let's try that one. It's only a little midget pad. One of the little cubes, but it might do. No, that's not working either. I need black suit. I keep telling myself I need black suit. Here we are, black suit. So let's see if I've got a yeah, a brush for that. It's also just a titchy one, but it'll be fine. It's quite a new one, so it should have lots of. That's better. It just frames it up a little bit. The other thing you could do is use your uh, Stabilo All Pencil. Just go around the outside and bleed it out a little bit. That would look good too. So we've, we've made a nice background here. So let's just take the time to finish it off nicely. I hope you give this a try. Don't feel that you have to stick with the colours that I've used. Um, you definitely don't. <laughs> It'll be really interesting for you to try it in different colours and see what happens. Nearly there, I think. I do think that looks better though. Looks nice and framed. There we go. Lovely. And there we have it, I think, guys. I think that is it. Let's put these away for next time. So yeah, there we have it. I don't know what you think of it. I hope you like it. And that's going to go into my green, big green book, you know, the big one with the pussycats on. And either on the facing page or underneath it, I'm going to put the recipe because I want to be able to come back to this in you know, a year's time and know exactly what I did to get this effect. 
so which stamps I used, um, you know, the white acrylic stamping, the number of these um, die cut sets that I used, because, you know, guaranteed, in a week's time, I couldn't remember. I just know I couldn't. Um, so, yeah, the whole recipe, you know, how I, I bleached the, the circles out with the um, wet wipe, everything. So I can go back to it, refer back to it and think, ah, yes, that's what I did. So I hope you like it. I hope you have a go if you've got the materials. Um, and I hope, I hope that all I haven't done is give you a shopping list because that's really not what I want to do. But, you know, I appreciate that not everybody has these spray stains hanging around. They are fantastic, though. But probably only if you're doing mixed media work. There's other ways, you know, if all, if all you're going to do is get this and just unscrew it and use the end to make splatters, don't buy the this. Just put your ink pad on, on your paper, smoosh it and pick it up and do splatters that way. It's, you know, save yourself the bother. But should you wish to invest in spray stains, then show me what you've done. Go on to the group, Miss Paint a Lot's Junk Journal group, post your pictures and we'll all be ooing and aahing over what you've done. Thanks for joining me, guys. I've loved doing this and there will be more in this series to follow as and when it's not a very, you know, it's not like Mixed Media Monday or anything like that. <laughs> That's too organized for me. Uh, I'm gonna put this in my book now, so. Thanks very much for joining me and I'll see you all very soon. Bye!